Hello, pre-calc people. Um, so we're going to give this e-learning stuff a try. Um, if you could have your chapter 12 packets out, um, the very first page should be this 12-1 note sheet. Um, just so you know, everything will be posted on Canvas. Um, so you can kind of see here that you know, videos will be uploaded here, the homework will be assigned here. Um, I will be collecting homework. I haven't quite figured it out yet. I think I'll probably be doing it in a Google form um, where you'll be taking a picture of your homework and then submitting it to me through that Google form. Um, so be on the lookout for that. That'll be coming via email eventually. Um, so yeah, everything is here. Also, in case you do not have your book, if you scroll down here and you click on Chapter 12 PDF, you will see um, a PDF of the entire Chapter 12 in case you need it. So um, yeah. The whole book is on here for you. All right, so just a heads up on that, um, but let's go ahead and get to the notes. So what we're going to be talking about are sets, elements, all kinds of stuff. So let's talk about what these mean. A set is going to be a well-defined collection of objects. Collection of objects. All right. So we're going to be dealing with sets of numbers or letters, things like that. Elements are going to be the objects of a set. So again, the objects could be numbers or letters. They could represent different things like heads versus tails or a one, two, three, four, five, or six on a die. Um, an empty or a null set is going to be a set without any elements, hence why it's empty. Uh, without, oops, elements, without any elements. Um, and then a subset is basically the definition is if each element of set A is also in set B, we call A a subset of B a subset of B. And the way we would write this is if A is a subset of B, it kind of has this weird little symbol to go with it. That means A is a subset of B. All right, so here we go. We've got um, We've got the write the set consisting of possible results outcomes from tossing a coin twice. All right, so anytime that you have a set, you're going to um, put in these fancy little brackets. And let's see, the possibilities are you could get two, eight, two heads, you could get two tails, all right? You could get a head and then a tail, or you could get a tail, then a head. That's about the only set of possibilities that you've got as far as um, cost, tossing a coin twice. We're going to write all the subsets of Q, R, and S, all right? so. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of organize our sets. We're going to write down all of the subsets with zero elements and then one element and then two elements. So we're going to start off with zero elements. All right, and if we have zero elements, that's going to be the empty or null set. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so that's zero elements. Um, and then we're going to talk about all the subsets that only have one element. So that would be you know, just Q, or just R, or just S. All right, and then we have the subsets that would have two elements. Can't write today. Two elements. All right, and if it's two elements, you could have Q with R. You could have Q with S. Right? And we're just kind of listing them, so we put commas in between. We've got R with S, and we've got, well, that's about it. Q with R, Q with S, and R with S. Those are the only subsets that would have two elements. We're not dealing with um, order at all. It's just what two letters could we put together. And then the last one is for our three elements, and there's only one possibility for that. That's to have P, not P, Q, R, and S all in the same subset. So we've got Q, R, and S. Okay, so there's that. 
Um, what we're going to be dealing with are intersections and unions, which I think you've seen before. The intersection is going to have this little uh, curve going down. Uh, it means the intersection of A and B. It's elements that are in both A and B. Union has this little U shape, and it's the elements that are in A or B or both. So intersection is going to be what they have in common and the union is going to be kind of the combination of everything together. The universal set is going to be all the elements you want to consider. All elements you want to consider. All right, and then a complement is going to be all elements in the universal set. All elements in the universal set. but not in a particular set. And I'll explain that, but not in a particular set. All right. So for example, if A is the set, all right, this little symbol means not A is the complement. All right, that means the complement of A, the complement. All right, it's basically stuff that wouldn't be in that particular set. All right, so let me explain. I'll show you how this works with this example below. So let u equal 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. All right, so u is like our universal set. We're only dealing with numbers from 0 to 9. Then we have a, which has these specific numbers, b, which has these specific numbers, and c, which has these specific numbers. We're going to find each of the following. So we'll play with this complement down here where you see these little bars. Um, a union b is going to be the combination of A and B put all together. So, and you don't need any duplicates, no duplicates needed. So you don't need to list some number twice. So let's see, we have one that's part of A, um, two that's part of B, three that's part of A, four that's part of both of them. But again, I don't need to list it twice. I've got a five in A, so I'm just putting them all together in one list. Six, which is in B, seven isn't in any of these, eight, and we have a nine. All right. So it's the combination, the union of all of those things put together. This one means intersection. Intersection means what do they have in common? All right. And that's what I'm going to be putting in my fancy little brackets. What do they have in common? All right. So let's see what duplicates we have between A and B. One doesn't, two's not in both, three's not in both, four is in both, and that's about it. We don't have any others that they have in common. So the only one that they have in common would be four, and then that's it. Um, when it comes to doing multiples like this, where we've got an intersection and a union, start with the parentheses. So we're going to do A union C. So the combination of A and C put together. So it would be one, we have, both, we have a three, we have a four, actually in both of them. Five is in A, six is in C, and then we have a nine in A. So that's A union C. And then we're doing B intersection with that. So what numbers does B and this set of numbers, what do they have in common? So B has two, four, six, eight. This doesn't have a two. It does have a four and it has a six, but no eight. So the only numbers that these sets have in common is four and six. So we're going to make our own little subset here of four and six, and that would be your answer. Um, not A means everything that's in the universal set, but not in A. All right, this is known as the complement of A. Um, so it's in U, but not A. So the universal is 0 through 9. Let's see, what's not in A? Well, 0 is definitely not part of A. Um, 1 is in there. 2 is not. All right, so anything that's in U but not in A. Uh, we got 3, 4, 5, let's see, 6, 7, 8 are all missing from A, but part of the universal. So 6, 7, and 8. And then that's it. That's how that one works. This one, you're going to want to do B union C first and then do the complement. All right, so B union C, let's see what that is. B union C is the combination of those together. So we've got one, we've got two, we've got three and four, 
don't have a five. We have six and we have eight. Six and eight. And then this is the complement. So this means basically in U, but not B union C. So anything that's in the zero through nine, but not in here. So let's see, we don't have a zero. So that's part of it. We've got one, two, three, four. We're missing five. That would be part of you, but not this part. Um, six, then we're missing seven and nine. So zero, five, seven, and nine. All right, and then this last one here for F, we've got to do the part that's under the complement. So the intersection of A, B, and C. So it's what do they all have in common, all three of them. So we got to see what A, B, and C all have in common. A's got a one, but B doesn't, so that won't work. Um, there's no two. Three, they don't all have a three. Do they all have a four? Yes, they all have a four. Do they all have a five? No. Do they all have a, they don't have all have a six or a seven. Do they all have an eight? No, and they don't all have a nine. So the only thing that they all have in common is four, and that's it. Um, and then we're doing the complement. So that means that everything that's in the universal, but not in this guy. So basically everything that's in here, but not four. So it would be everything but four. So zero, one, two, three, not four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. And that would be um, what the final answer is. This is the A intersect B intersect C complement of. All right. And this one down here, I didn't label it, but it's the complement of B union C. All right. So I know that there's more on the back. We're going to do that later. What you're going to work on now is just part of the day one homework. You're going to do page 881 and you're just going to do 1 to 21 odd. All right. So just do 1 to 21 odd. All right. Um, the answers are in the back of your book. Evens are posted still on Canvas. If you don't have your book, it's on the Canvas page. Just kind of scroll down at the bottom and um, you'll see it down here. Um, chapter 12. I showed you at the beginning of the video. Okay, so um, good luck with that. And um, later on this week, I'll be doing um, some Google Meets where you guys can um, video conference with me if you have questions about stuff so that I can help you directly with your questions live so that you can get the help you need. All right. But in the meantime, good luck with this. Hopefully it's not too bad and I'll have a video for you tomorrow. See ya.